Women Entrepreneurship um, Series is uh, brought to you courtesy of our very generous sponsors, and we're very fortunate to have them helping us to bring the series for no charge um, to our lady entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs across the area. So we have our gold sponsors, which is um, McMaster University Engineering, the W. Booth School. We have the Hamilton Business Center, and Kristen is here, and she's going to be introducing Connie shortly. And we have the BBC as well. And then for silver sponsor, we have SB Partners. Um, my name is Shelley McQuaid, and um, I'm joined by Selma Burney and uh, Navita Dahl as well. We all work together to bring you the Women Entrepreneurship Series. It's in honor of Justin Policarpio, who was a I always called him a multipreneur who started the Women Entrepreneurship Series um, 10 years ago and unfortunately passed away at the young age of 30 a couple of years ago. Um, and it was our goal in his honor to keep the series going. So thank you very much to our sponsors. We've been able to, um, to do that. And hopefully post COVID, um, some of you will be able to join us. Uh, the series is typically hosted at McMaster Innovation Park. So um, we came up with the great idea at the beginning of the year that let's have a theme for this year. And the theme would be brave and dare to live, you know, the life that you want to live. Little did we know when we did that, that it would be a very relevant topic for many of us um, this year in light of COVID-19 and the challenges that it's presenting for us. And um, I remember years ago, I read a book by, I think the author is Paul Stoltz, and he wrote a book called The Adversity Quotient. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it, but I really love the idea that he presented in the book. He put people into three areas. So he said, you're either a quitter, a camper, or a climber. And um, the idea behind it was that a quitter it's kind of fairly obvious. They just kind of throw in the towel and kind of give up on things. And I think it's something like COVID-19, they get kind of frozen by it and they get into their panic zone and kind of stay there. The next one is a camper. And essentially with a camper, they kind of set up camp in a certain area and then they really just look to protect their camp. And regardless of what else comes on around them, they really don't want to move or change their camp. And I think that, again, relating that back to COVID-19 is because things have changed so significantly, if you try to kind of stay in your same camp, eventually you're gonna kind of be left behind. And it might take a while, but it is gonna happen. And then the third one is a climber, which I guess is fairly obvious as well too. You're continually challenging yourself to continue to grow and you're becoming adaptive and resilient um, in face with what's going on. I was listening to a webinar last week and um, the, the speaker referred to it as the great reset for COVID. And I thought that was kind of a neat term or a neat kind of way of, of using that. And Connie was just talking about how every um, 100 years or so we run into some other kind of um, pandemic challenge that we, we face. And I think part of the key to that is anytime there's a significant change like this, it means there's always opportunities as well too. So I think part of it is to challenge ourselves so that we can see the glass as half full rather than being half empty. And that's why always good news, Connie Smith is such a great speaker to kick this off because I know she's one that really buys into that philosophy. And I think for you, Connie, the glass isn't half full, it's brimming over. So I know you're going to give us lots of great tips and tools and techniques today. Um, and uh, we have with us Kristen uh, from the uh, Hamilton Business Center, and she's going to introduce Connie and read Connie's bio. Then we're going to go through Connie's session. And if you have any questions as you're going, as Connie's going through, feel free to put those in your chat box. Depending on the relevance, um, Selma's kind of helped to filter some of those questions. And if it works, we'll do those as we're going along. If not, at the end of the session, Connie will be willing to answer those questions. And then we'll do our wrap up. And so uh, with that, Kristen, can we get you to introduce Connie? 
Sounds great. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Kristen Hugamoss. I work with a uh, dynamic team here in City Hall. Uh, our role is really to help you, the entrepreneurs and business people across Hamilton. So please know that we're here, we're working, we're wanting to support you, and there's lots of programs and services. So reach out, connect with us. I can put our, our number and our information on the website um, or maybe in the chat feature here in the phone number. Uh, the team is here answering lots of calls and it's, it's as Shelly kind of alluded to, there's a lot of pivoting, a lot of change, and a lot of positive things happening. So we're really wanting to support you with your questions and concerns. There's a lot of training and seminars and engagement that we can help you with as well. And again, our consultation team and professionals are here behind the scenes, really trying to make sure that we can help you through this time. So hopefully we'll get to connect, but today it's a, a real honor to be part of this and introduce Connie. As Shelly had mentioned, we've been part of the series, I guess it's 10 years now, Shelly, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And the mandate of the Women Entrepreneurship Network really parallels what we do here in, in trying to support and foster economic growth and business to business um, opportunities and making those connections. So thank you for all that you're doing, Shelly and the team to make this happen and continue to make it happen. And uh, now more so than ever, I'm, I'm glad to see we have so many people here connecting, being engaged and, and really ready to hear from Connie. At this point, it's my, uh, my honor really to introduce Connie. So Connie Smith has been one of the most recognizable and engaging personalities on the air and behind the podium in Southern Ontario for more than 30 years known for her integrity, compassion, and ability to connect with people in person and through her storytelling. Always attracted to stories and interviews and inspire and offer hope in the face of issues and challenges, together with her husband, director Dave Wilson, after 30 years in conventional television news, she has created Always Good News, a daily program that aired nationally on CTS, Yes TV, that gained attention worldwide, both on television and the web, between uh, 2009 and 2012. Behind the scenes, Connie has served on several boards and community um, agencies. Inducted into the Order of Ontario in January 2012, Connie co-hosted the annual McMaster's Hospital Children's Celebration Telethon for 17 years, which earned her the prestigious Hamilton Health Sciences Cornerstone Award. She is also the recipient of both Queen's Golden and Diamond Jubilee Medals, a Premier Award nomination, and an Ontario Soci Association of Broadcasters Howard Canine Memorial Award, and the Ken West Community Spirit Award. She is also among the 2010 inductees into the Hamilton Gallery of Distinction, and Hi, can I hear the Society huh? of Canada's National Public Awareness Award and the documentary special, Elizabeth's Hope, which has been seen in countries around the world. Connie, over to you. Well, thank you, Kristen, for that uh, very generous introduction. I really appreciate it. And, and you know, as, as Shelley was saying early on, and we're all thinking about what's going on right now in this COVID-19 era um the question about being brave and and i know shelly was saying connie what was, what was your bravest moment right and yes. um <laughs> it's really hard it's hard to say that when you're looking around at these truly brave heroes all around us today um from the nurses and doctors in the icu to the grocery workers everything i mean it's hard to for me to say oh well I was so brave doing this, right? But I feel um, by staying home and doing the part that so many of us have to do, although we feel a little inadequate in that role, we are being brave by following the path, by doing what we're told to do, by being informed, being enlightened citizens of the world, and by keeping the faith. I think that is bravery right now and knowing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So um, yes, I have interviewed um, murderers who have just been released from jail and told me they were ready to murder again. Was I brave <laughs> doing that? I was scared. Um, I uh, hid behind a tree during a, uh, a stakeout between police and someone holed up with a gun. Was that brave? No, it was, my job so you just do it right 
So it, it's hard to say what is bravery. To me, bravery is, it's almost a choice to go above and beyond. Like all those volunteers out there manning the food banks, uh, making the masks at home. To me, this is bravery and, and keeping the faith. But I can tell you that um, when I was about 11 years old, I probably did the bravest thing that I could have thought of at that time. And that was get up in front of my class and make a speech. I was the smallest, shyest kid in school. Uh, a little bit of bullying going on just because I was such a great little target. But when I got up in front of my class and made a speech, I found out that all of a sudden I was taller. Everyone else was sitting down and they were listening and I liked it. <laughs> so I went on and um, that next year I did it again and I won for the city of Burlington. This is the little man right here. And um, I can probably go right ahead to my little PowerPoint. I think I'm okay to do that folks. Mm -hmm. You'll see I'm going to do my little share screen here. Bear with me. And there I am. And let's get that up. And we'll do this. And do, 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 do. I'll just get rid of something on top here. Bear with me, folks. Bear oh, that's me. your that's your Zoom part. So all you need oh, to do okay. is you press F5. All right. Can I just I just admitted somebody and now I'm a go. Okay. This is the new world, folks. Here we go from the beginning. <laughs> Here we go. So there's that little statue, folks. I am maybe 10 years old. I won't tell you what year it was, but the Beatles were big. And um, anyway, you can say that I found my voice back then. Um, uh, after that, broadcast journalism school followed, went on to broadcasting CFRB radio, then um, CKBR in Barrie and finally CHCH TV in Hamilton. Um, I got to interview all kinds of wonderful people as a reporter. Um, this guy you might recognize, his hair is a little different now, so is mine. But was I brave interviewing people like Michael Douglas? I was scared to death. I wouldn't say brave, but totally excited. He was a lovely, lovely man. And so is this guy. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to do that. Let me get rid of that. Uh, so is this guy, Danny DeVito. I found that I really enjoyed the whole idea of talking to people and um, just the joy of one on one conversation and really being able to bring positive stories about people to the forefront. Um, this is a chimpanzee <laughs> named Joe Bananas. Uh, he was um, confiscated at the U.S. border. He was a U.S. circus animal. No one knew what to do with him. The SPCA couldn't take him. And there were talk, talk about, oh, what are we going to do with this poor chimp? Maybe we'll have to put him down. Well, of course, I covered that story. And people were so touched by that story. And it told me that stories that touch the heart are so important to people and stay with people. And, you know, we all like to think we're very intellectual beings and we make decisions based on, you know, uh, what our brains tell us. But you know what? Our hearts play such a huge role in everything we do and all the choices we make in life. I'll tell you one of the bravest things I did, I guess I can say in retrospect, was going on air on that anchor desk back then. My heart was beating so loud, I was afraid my microphone was picking that up and all people would hear at home is thump, 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 thump. Um, so I guess you could say I was brave, I did it. I was asked to go on the anchor desk and uh, I did it. And I learned from these great people around that desk who are very good friends to this day. That dear man on the far left, we lost Tom Sherrington the year my son was born, but he taught me Always ask tough questions, Connie, but ask with respect and dignity and humanity. And if you shake that person's hand before they walk away, you are doing your job. So Tom Sherrington was my mentor. Of course, not all the stories were fun and joyous, were they? Uh, going on the air, 
at 8.30 that morning of 9-11, we saw one plane go into one of the towers. Maybe it's an accident. When that second plane went in, we knew it was no accident. And on the air I went, stayed on the air for about eight or nine hours till I was relieved. And I didn't know, no one knew how that story would end or even if we would still be on the air, still alive at the end of that fateful day. But were we brave? I know the people on the ground there were brave. Um, we stayed with it and um, did we come out better on the other side? did certainly show the endurance of human spirit and how important it is to focus on the people that are doing the good work to keep us safe. I can't tell you anyone more brave folks here with us on this wonderful Zoom meeting today than these little children um, during those Mac kid telephones. The little fellow in front with the glasses, I keep in touch with him today. He is uh, McKinley, um, a wonderful young man, still fighting physical challenges, but those brave youngsters, they not only inspired everyone attached to that telephone, but they inspired their parents, terrified parents, not knowing what was going to happen. But when those children smiled, they inspired and motivated their parents. Uh, my last day at CH, 10 years ago, wow. <sighs> Brave, brave in a sense that I had decided that I was going to sign off on my own terms. I could have left two weeks ago when I got that little envelope saying my anchor job didn't exist anymore. But I decided, no, I'm going to stay on. And during those two weeks, I felt such freedom and confidence, I guess because I knew that this chapter was about to end and I was going to take control of it. And I did. And I, I wrote out what I was going to say and I thought about it, but I did not put it in the telecue, which is what we read off the screen that we read, excuse me, we read off because I didn't want anyone else to see what I was going to say ahead of time. Not that I didn't trust that management would come in and try to alter something, but I thought, no, this, this is mine. And I said what I had to say and thanked everyone along the way for the, one of the greatest opportunities anyone in this business can have. And I, I handed the reins over and said, this is a sacred trust that you have with your viewers. And I just hope that you can maintain that trust and respect it. So there you go, folks. Um, after that, I had what I called my nine month maternity leave from television news, where I walked my dog and wore yoga pants instead of business suits and thought a lot about what was happening as I watched the news as an ordinary citizen? <clears throat> and I, I saw that there was a lot happening that wasn't on the news. Good things, positive things, inspiring things. I used to think if it was important, it was on the news in that newsroom. And I realized there's so much more going on. And it's not reflected equally. I felt there was a great imbalance in the news that was out there, the reality that was happening in our world. So. I came up along with my husband, who had been my producer and director for many years at CH. And we thought, you know what, we need more good news. And a colleague of my time at the time, Fred Anderton, who had also lost, or I guess he retired a few years earlier. He joined in with me, he says, Connie, yeah, let's do good news. So we approached Tim Hortons, believe it or not, as a main sponsor and their motto was always fresh. So we thought, let's make it always good news. Well, the Tim Horton thing didn't work out because they had already moved to some kind of a video virtual in-store thing. But we kept that brand, Always Good News, and decided, you know what, let's, let's just pitch it. My husband was uh, directing and producing a show called The Michael Corrin Show on CTS at the time. And uh, my husband said, just pitch it, pitch it to the programming manager. I, I bet he'd love it. And I was kind of, uh, you know, you suffer from your self-confidence takes a bit of a dip. And my identity was wrapped up as Connie Smith on CHCH TV. And I, I wasn't sure who I was anymore, but I got up my nerve and I, I talked to the program director and uh, he said, let's do it. And I was shocked. And we were on the air in six weeks with a beautiful set, a beautiful crew of people. 
we did not ignore the so-called bad news of the day. That would be totally irresponsible. But what we did do, we looked to the next chapter, who in the world, who in the country, who in our community is doing something to make it better. And that's what we focused on in Always Good News. And um, Mr. Rogers always said, and he was quoting his mother on this, when times are tough, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. And that's exactly what we did for our three years or so in production. And that show was uh, on reruns for many years after that. And the industry's changing. Things contract. New owners come in. So that was the end of the television show. But you know, um, things change. Pivot is the key word today. We've heard it with, with Shelley and with Kristen as well. So we pivoted and we kept that brand. And now I, I, I try to focus on that on my Facebook page, Always Good News with Connie Smith. And today, folks, who are the helpers? My goodness, there they are. And we're seeing finally a focus on the helpers. Um, how can you ignore people clanging their pots and pans and donating food to these people on the front lines? So I'm very excited that I think we're seeing a paradigm shift in journalism so that we are focusing on the helpers today because there is scientific proof that good news has a physical and mental and emotional impact on our health. We had been in a, a funk, a communal depression, bombarded with bad news all the time. So hopefully we're feeling our, our, our hearts are lighter as we see the goodness in people all around us. And it is so true that thinking positive thoughts will empower you. Again, I interviewed co-authors of a study that did some scientific studies that prove when you hear something positive, it not only makes you kind of smile, but it, it affects your whole body chemistry. Do it enough and it will change your life. So let's take that good news concept and, and transfer it to business, to entrepreneurship. And this is what I've talked about to different groups in, in workshops, usually in person, but this is the first uh, virtual one. Good news is good business, is good news. And what I mean by that, it's this reciprocal relationship between good news and good business. Good news by aligning yourself with something positive is good business because it says something about who you are and your values as a global and community citizen. And when you do that as a business, that becomes good news. So it becomes this wonderful self-fulfilling prophecy. So what I want to do in these few minutes we have together is help you maximize your message as a business person, as a as a global citizen as well. By doing that, you will actualize your goals, but to begin with, we have to optimize you. This is where it starts to make the most of your message. And why not think of it this way? Be a helper in whatever you do in your product or service. Answer a niche. What is out there right now at this time that needs something? Don't be a problem, be a helper. Be real, I tell people, be human. We relate to each other on a human level. We relate to how we're feeling, what the weather's like, whether we slop coffee on our, on our clothes in that morning. Be real, be relatable, be relevant. I call those the three R's. So why does it all start with you? Well, I'll tell you why. You are a living, breathing, walking, talking billboard for who you are and what you represent, whether it's you individually, as a business person, as a corporation, you are the front of it. So what is our biggest obstacle when it comes to actualizing ourselves in order to maximize our results? The biggest obstacle that we're pushing uphill all the time? Well, it's something called our brain's negative bias. Since the beginning of time, our brains have been wired to react to imminent threat or danger, all right? It's in our DNA. So if we're being chased by a mountain lion or a big 
older that were having to push uphill in those cave person days, adrenaline would immediately shoot out to our extremities to help us run fast, push that boulder, jump high. And that adrenaline would be run off through that physicality. The problem is today, few of us, I don't know, maybe if you're working in a newsroom, you have to jump over some hurdles sometimes, but most of us do not have to outrun mountain lions anymore. So we still brace though for that threat, that imminent danger, that fight or flight reaction. So what happens? That adrenaline that our mind-body connection disseminates gets stored in our body somewhere. And, and healthcare professionals and scientists are predicting that this storage of these negative hormones that aren't released can cause trouble down the line. Now we talked about the computer age and wow, that's how it all began, <laughs> if you can believe it, those world's largest computers back then. Connie. Connie. Yes. Can I just can I just ask you a quick question here? So yes. what techniques, you know, further to that about the negative kind of perspective, and I know you talked about some of the adversity that you personally have come up against in your life. What tools or techniques have you used for yourself to help? Kind of well, I can tell spot? you, I'm <laughs> getting to that in the very next okay, slide. All right, so. I'm stealing your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You're helping me build up the buzz here. Okay. Um, I guess what I was just going to say, Shelley, is the computer age was supposed to free up our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And allow us to be and relax. And, you know, we were talking about a three, four day week and that, you know, these industries would um, burst open, helping us use up our free time. But that didn't happen, right? That didn't happen. We're in a 24-7 world, right? And we're constantly bracing for that phone to ding or for the boss to, you know, tell us to do something at 11 o'clock at night. As a result, what's happening to us, right? Does this look familiar? How we, we hunch over our laptops and when we brace from the cold or from fear or from sadness, we're hunching over like that, right? I'm going to see if I can lose our... Um, our shared screen for one moment here because this is what I'm going to talk about now Shally in terms of how do you deal with that and I had to deal with this going on the air when I was so terrified all the time and I'd be like this mm -hmm. you have to think about where is your body right now are your shoulders up stuck to your earlobes are you hunched over like this is your jaw clenched like most of us do we have to Think of our foreheads as dashboards in our car and stop and pause. Where are my shoulders? Well, bring them up and I want everyone to do this right now, just sitting behind your computers. Find your shoulders, bring them up and back and down. Oh, wow. Is that a little different than where you were seconds ago? We have to be mindful of this because we have fallen into a default muscular skeletal position of being hunched, bracing and, and hunched over. So we've got to be mindful. And just the exercise of bringing your shoulders up, down and back and moving is wonderful. And part and parcel of this is stretching. I start all my classes in all my journalism courses with getting up and stretching and jiggling. We jiggle folks. No, normally I'd be standing up jiggling my feet and with my slippers on. But doing this gets what we call the synovial fluid moving throughout our bodies, which helps our joints to move. But when we don't move, that juiciness gets stuck and we lose our ability to be limber. So number one, we have to constantly move ourselves and not be stuck behind a computer too long. That's the first thing. I'm gonna go back to my shared screen here and move into the second, the second answer to this thing is, we have forgotten, ladies and gentlemen, how to breathe. We have forgotten how to breathe, and I'm just trying to make my computer move again. <laughs> again, the joys of technology. The joys of technology. Let's see. Uh, maybe I have to take that pause off. There we go. Okay, stay with me, folks. We're going to figure this out. I know there's going to be an arrow somewhere that's going to allow me to move. There it is. Okay. We have to relearn how to breathe, folks. 
Do you remember when you had a newborn just home or maybe you were babysitting and you'd poke in their room to see if their little bellies were rising and falling, right? Because that's how we're supposed to breathe. I want you all right now, no one's looking, I want you to let out your bellies. Oh, I just heard a little tingle tingle and that happened, I don't know how it did. We have to relearn how to utilize our lung capacity because we breathe with the top third of our lungs most of the time in this fight or flight mode. We're, we're panting and what happens when you breathe like this, you run out of gas, number one, and you also, your voice becomes tinny and you, um, you lose your energy, ladies and gentlemen. You lose your energy. I'm just resuming my share here to show you a little bit of this. There we go. Where am I now? I want to come back. I want to come back. Here I am. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to put your hands on your belly and really think about pushing your stomach out as you take in air. It takes a second to click into this because it's kind of counterintuitive because we're always in this bracing position. But when you do that, and I hope you're all doing this on Zoom, and then to expel that air, push your bellies in. What you're doing, your diaphragm is dropping down to allow your lungs to expand to its fullest capacity. So you can take a big breath. We have to stop and do this a few times a day to center ourselves and reduce nervousness. This helps you lose those butterflies in your stomach. Put your hands on your rib cage next. See if you can find those little bones in there. Now, like a couple of old fashioned pump handles, you're gonna push the rib cage out. Wow, I bet I heard a few creaks and cracks there. <sighs> push the rib cage in again to expel that air. Do that two or three times, folks. You're doing so much, you're getting oxygen circulating throughout your brain. This is going to add clarity of thought. It's going to add tone to your voice. It's going to give you time to think and compose yourself. It's going to make you feel better. And when you feel better, guess what? You look better. So think of those things. We're going to improve our posture. Even when you're driving the car, I want you to think about where are my shoulder blades? Are they hitting against the back of my car seat where they should, or are you hunched over your steering wheel? Next, folks, your most important communications tool. So if you're standing and sitting erect, you're breathing nicely, and you're feeling good, what do you think is your most important communications tool? I don't know. Shelly, any guesses? Would it be your voice? Bingo, you've got it. It is your voice. Your most important communication tool is your voice. You've got to take care of your voice. You've got to hydrate your voice. I'm drinking water right now. There you go. And also you have to learn your range in your voice. Now this may seem kind of strange to you, but don't shout and fry what we say sing and I'll tell you what I mean by that frying your voice because I had to see a voice pathologist some time ago when I was talking so much on the air sometimes three shows a day <clears throat> I got into this <clears throat> habit quite often I would I would work through laryngitis terrible terrible thing to do pushing my voice pushing my voice your voice box your larynx is like a clarinet with reeds that vibrate and when you expel air, those reeds vibrate and sounds out. Now, if you go too high like this, or if you go too low like this, to make a point sometimes, you're actually rubbing those reeds, those vocal cords together, and you're going to be damaging your vocal cords. So, and to sound more pleasant, find your range. Go as high as you can go without straining the voice and as low as you can go. Use your range when you speak to add emphasis or pacing, to add intonation and, and to add interest. You want to look good and confident, but you want to sound good and pleasing as well. And again, sing, sing to your kids, don't shout to them because shouting hurts the voice. 
as whispering does, believe it or not. So singing. Now, I don't know if your kids would like that better or not, but singing, uh, according to my voice pathologist, is much better than shouting. So the final thing in this sequence of technical um, steps to take to improve and, and optimize you is to smile. Now that may seem like an oversimplification, but the act of smiling, isn't that the cutest little thing? The act of <laughs> smiling, those muscle actions actually trigger the release of endorphins. You know what endorphins do? It's like the same thing that runners get, that runner's high. Endorphins make you feel good. They, they energize you, they uplift you. And I want you, it's kind of hard to do on Zoom. <laughs> I was going to say, if you turn to the person next to you and smile, see what happens. Guess what, they smile. All of a sudden, you feel better, they like you better. You become a more engaging person. When you stand or sit tall, you walk with confidence, you speak pleasantly, and ladies and gentlemen, when you smile. And the last thing, and this came to me rather late in life, because as a reporter, as a busy person, you're trying to get the information, you're trying to get the answers you need. But thinking back, we don't listen enough. We don't listen enough in conversation to people. I've been there. We've all been in little clusters of groups and, and you're so anxious to get in what you want to say that you just, you're not even listening to what the other person says. And quite often you just step on top of them. If you want to be an engaging professional, taking one second before you reply does two things. Number one, it gives you that moment to really think about what they said and react accordingly. And the second thing it does, it makes that person think, wow, they were really listening to what I had to say. That is pretty cool. We don't listen enough. So take that extra second, that extra pause. Try it even sitting around the dinner table with, with family or, or with friends. Take that second and look them in the eye while you're smiling, of course, and you will respond in such a way that will move the conversation forward, whether it's a business negotiation or a friendly conversation, you are moving the conversation forward. Because in business, you know, we don't want to just convey information. Uh, the next step, we want people to think about that information. But the third step in business, you want that to be a call to action. You want to influence behavior, whether they buy something or attend something. And you do that by being engaging and moving the conversation forward. So I'll review some of these steps again with you folks, and then maybe we can um, have some questions uh, or, you know, any, any comments. So we want to make the most of your message by finding the positive and finding the passion. We talked about that, being a helper, because we want to optimize you. So how do we do that? In this digital world, we have to disconnect to reconnect with ourselves. It sounds so trite and simplistic, but by simply walking away, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody else is, we have to stop and center ourselves and think. We've got to breathe. We've got to stretch. We have to walk and sit tall. Think of someone walking onto a stage to make a presentation. If they kind of slink in and they kind of got a frown on their face, it's like, oh, really? But if they walk on and they're positive and they're looking around, they've got a smile on their face, all of a sudden, you've made a connection. Find the positive. Find the positive and the passion. And don't forget the three R's, being real being relatable, being relevant, always pivot. We see all the advertisers on television these days. It's amazing how they've pivoted their campaigns to being helpful and positive during the COVID-19. You've got to be totally ready to adapt to what's happening out there and make yourself or your product or service the solution to be the helper. Think about those three R's. Finally, be kind. 
there was a bumper sticker I saw some time ago that stuck with me and it said, be kind today. You don't know what the person, the people you meet today have been going through. So maybe that'll hold you back from that road rage incident. Be kind, listen, and smile. And, and I guarantee you that if you can follow these things to help optimize you, make the most of your message, find the positive, you will be well on your way to actualizing your goals. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my presentation to you at this point. Great. Thank you very much, Bonnie. That was uh, a lot of really good and validating, I think, information and, um, and insights. And I know the one thing you were talking about with breathing, I've read that when we're, um, we get into that fight or flight kind of stage that you were talking about where we start shallow breathing, we only have access to a third of our brain capacity when we're in that state. So we literally have access to less information, which is part of the reason why we run into challenges trying to make decisions or work through things or whatever the case may be. So I think there was um, a lot of really good tools and techniques in there. Well, it's so true. And, and you'll hear people say, no, just take a breath, take a breath, you know, in a moment of panic. But it's really yeah. true. It's your lung power. It's your brain power. And when you're thinking on your feet, whether you're in a negotiation or a business pitch, you want to be prime. And mm -hmm. so by doing the breath work and even the posture, which is conducive to proper breath work, mm -hmm. you're really optimizing your brain power mm -hmm. and, and your sense of positivity, right? Yeah. And I think it's one of those things too, like you were saying, if you're constantly monitoring your posture, then it just becomes habitual and it becomes your new normal. Well, it does, but we've got to retrain ourselves. And I, I had to see a massage therapist for, for many years because it was really affecting my spine when I was sitting on the anchor desk all those years trying to look relaxed. <laughs> right? and, yeah. and then you'd be swirling around to get onto your computer. So it really was affecting my muscular skeletal structure. So, and I do yoga. Um, for many years, I've done yoga. It's been a tremendous help to me from the breath work to the posturing. But it's really just being mindful and mm -hmm. checking in with your mind, body, which is totally connected. And, but, but you got to stop and remind yourself to go on pause. Mm -hmm. to think about those things. And we get so caught up that we do mm -hmm. forget. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, but did we have some questions? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. So I'm going okay. to unmute everybody. There's about 23 people, including ourselves here. And if you have a question, then take a moment and smile and ask Connie your question. So I'm going to unmute everyone now. If you feel that you don't want to be unmuted, then you can mute yourself. Just um, while everybody's being unmuted, I'll just mention that our next session is... Um, at the end of May, and we have uh, Professor Maya, who's also an author, and wrote the book, Hey Lady, Stop Apologizing. So she's going to be our speaker that we're going to have then. If you're on the list, you'll, you'll be notified of that as well with, um, with all of the details. So I guess I would ask if you did have a question, if you could either just write it in the chat or put your hand up so we don't end up getting kind of everybody all at once. Because I think there, is there a feature? Is there not? Yeah. Okay, Judy, Hi. I just saw put her Hi, hand Judy. up. Hi, guys. Well, Connie, I love two things. I mean, I loved it all, but the two things that really struck me, singing and yes. smiling. <laughs> yeah. um, of course, Judy. Although your heart is breaking. So everybody needs to get out and sing. You're so true. Well, even if you can't sing, Judy can sing. We all know that. <laughs> but it's so true, singing and dancing. A a another friend of mine, Rosita, um, she's gone on Facebook challenging people, just get up and dance. And it's so true, just moving and, and singing. Exactly, Judy. It does so much for our mental states. And when we elevate all our mental states, we're in such a better place to move forward, right? Be helpers and make a difference. Absolutely, and I think that's part of it, you know, 
I think at times like this too, we think what is it that we could do just being one individual person? But I think just further what you said, Connie, is you know, your well-being and your state impacts everybody else in your circle and around you. So if we can get that collective going, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. It's it's contagious. And even that little smile experiment, um, whenever I've done it, whether it's a, a class or, or a, I, I did a, a team of lawyers uh, a few months ago, and they were pretty serious, these lawyers, I can tell you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it just totally changed the feel of the room because they smiled at each other and oh, it just, it takes the guard down and you become human. And when you're reacting on a human level, you connect to people on that human level. And, and I've, I've, I've fought against, no, I shouldn't say I fought against technology. Technology has revolutionized our world. Oh my God, it's made it, uh, it's enabled us to do this for instance. But we got to watch that it doesn't control us because we are losing the ability to interact face to face. And we, we all know about that with our kids and even us, we're on our phones all the time, even out to dinner. When we used to go out to dinner, people would be on their phones. We have to maintain this face to face connection. We're going to lose the ability to empathize if we don't. My sister's a nursing prof. She worries about her patients who are, or not her patients, her students, eventually her patients who just read machines rather than looking into a patient's eyes and saying, how are you feeling? Reading body language. You know, communicating isn't just voices on text. It's body language, it's tone of voice. There's so many elements to communicating and it's just more important than ever in the face of our, our growing technology. I, I personally like Lori's comments about she was singing it would keep people at their six foot distance. I yes. too am one of those people. <laughs> that would be one oh, yes. good way to keep social distancing. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. Does anyone um, else have a comment or question? Oh, We're getting some good information in the chat. I think people have uh, definitely enjoyed the session. I guess if, um, I think that's pretty much it, I think, for the comments. Is there any other pressing questions, Selma, that you can see that? Uh, I, there was a comment earlier, Julie Cole was on, but she had to, she said really loving this, but had to check out the kids are being ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> well, everyone, um, thanks so much, Connie. And Connie, this is a little footnote, Her, your sister Barb is her neighbor. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yes. And my sister is the yogini. She's, yes, a spree yoga. Okay. There you go. There small you go. world. Small world. world. Small and world. and Julie about? was um, one of our speakers. Actually, she's with um, Maple's Label. She was our speaker, I think, last year at our first yes. session. Yeah. You yeah. That. yeah. So it's with that, world. I guess we'll, uh, we'll wrap everything up and um thank you very much everyone for your attendance and thank you again so much connie it was wonderful presence. yeah thank you connie yes, it's just so nice to see faces yes yeah. <laughs> i see my my husband's loving face all the time but sometimes <laughs> it, it's yes. been great yeah maybe absolutely. we should all sing out there you go yeah just yeah. hang yes <laughs> But it is nice that we can bring people together this way. And it, yeah. it really is, it's a positive thing. And we do thank technology for allowing us to do this. And hopefully come up with a vaccine. That's the next I thing. know, I know, absolutely. And thank you, Kristen, for the introduction and for yes, your sponsorship. Thank you. Thank and you, um, we look forward to seeing everybody at the next session. But before we do, Selma has something to say. Uh, the next session is Monday, May 25th. It will also be at 1230. Uh, I will send out a link. Um, there is one on Eventbrite. It's for the online session. And you're welcome to register there and send it to anybody else you know, because you can join anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, Stay well, thank you. everybody. Thank you. Stay okay, healthy. Bye, everyone. Take right, care. Bye. It's a small world after all. <laughs> it's a small world after all. Okay, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Thanks, Judy. Nice to see everybody. You Bye. Too. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone.